Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. Holy. <clears throat> Holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Can we lift up our voices and just begin to thank God for another day? This is day 16 of our 28 days in the word hallelujah glory to god in the book of acts we've studied 15 chapters we're on day 16 the 16 chapter can we give him praise and glory can we thank and magnify his name for every revelation every insight every prophecy, every declaration of our lives, every decree that will come to pass or has already come to pass. Can we give him praise from the depths of our heart? Can we bless and magnify his name? For he's a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, we give you praise and glory. We say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Okay, let's do something. Let's post the link. As you've seen it in the general group, let's post the link to our various uh, networks. Uh, put it on your social status. Put it on uh, everywhere that you can put it on. Let's invite people to join. Hallelujah. God has been faithful Open our eyes to see revelations, instructions for the early church and also for us. I want us to give him praise from the depths of our heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we just do that right now? Be a social media evangelist. Just put it out there, put it out there, put it out there. Yes, yes, yes. Let more people join. Let your neighbors, um, your friends, uh, yes, your church, the church members, the ones on your streets, uh, and even the ones you notice have not been joining, send to them, encourage them, let them join. Hallelujah. We're on chapter 16. Chapter 15 was filled with a lot of stuff. A lot of word was shared yesterday in church. And I just want to say, God is faithful. He's been showing up speaking to our hearts, directing us in what to do, and we're more than grateful. So we see in chapter 15, that was where they had the dispute, uh, and they went to the um, Jerusalem council, and it was said that there are only four things that they needed to follow, aside from just believing in Jesus, walk in love. And so they explained the walk in love by saying, okay, don't eat food, um, that is offered to idols. Don't eat food that is from strangled animals. Don't take food that is of blood, that blood is filled in it. Don't drink blood. Don't do all those things. And then finally, stop fornicating. Those three things were instrumental. Three, I'll talk about the fourth one. Three were just a walk in love. They were saying that, you know, the Jews have been taught in a certain way over a period of time. We have a mixed multitude in church. Some people's faith will be affected when they see you eating meat that is strangled. Not that the meat by itself is wrong, but just so that you can walk in love with the other brother who is weak in faith or weak in his understanding of the scriptures. Walk in love. Don't use your um, liberty as a, a license to sin, as a license to bring your brother down. So those were the three, um, um, that was what the three different things, whether it was eating um, food sacrificed to adults or idols or eating um, or partaking of strangled animals 
or taking blood. Those things by themselves were not what would take you to heaven. So they said it was Jesus only. But they also said just to walk in love with your brethren, the Jews who had been taught from childhood that you shouldn't touch these things, these three things which we've mentioned, don't do it. Then the fornication part also. Why was it so necessary? Because they were in a Gentile nation at that point in time and all these things were free. They, they had temple prostitutes. They had things that they were practicing and it was it was um, abo- uh, it was abhorrent to most of the Jews that these things were going on. In fact, to be quite candid, there was a sect even amongst the Jews that was practicing what the Gentiles were. So, but the devout Jews believed thou shalt not covet another man's wife and they believed that they had recited the ten commandments from when they could open their mouths to speak and they were adults at this point so it had been ingrained in their consciousness that's not the way to go so they said we cannot walk in those things and moreover to truly be doing that which is to not um, be fornicating is that you love the other individual why will you make the other individual to go to hell just because you want to have some pleasure wait handle yourself get married you can have as much time as possible to do whatever you want to do with each other it's the marriage bed on defiled why will you defile somebody else and spoil somebody else's future when you can hold yourself so walking in love also shows in that measure so when we say don't do those things it is not because we are saying just don't do it that we're giving you a rule It's because we know you can walk in a higher level of understanding and a higher level of life whereby you are walking in love with your brother that's why scripture says and timothy encouraged that treats the younger women women as sisters and the older women as mothers you wouldn't sleep with your mother nor will you sleep with your junior sister so it was easy to understand what he was saying so that's what he was just trying to bring across to them let's walk in love with everyone that is around us think pure thoughts towards them and not evil thoughts hallelujah glory to god and then we saw having gotten that verdict they went and um, back to their churches to the um um bible believing gentile people and they went to them and they declared this after they had brought so much strength to the church and the church was blossoming satan you know it was satan that started the problem in the first uh, first place sending some sects or some pharisees but let me also say this I, I i forgot to mention it you notice that the bible was very clear paul or better still at this point in time acts was written by um apostle luke so luke was writing and luke w- walked in love with those men and did not put their names did you notice that the men that were sent by the jerusalem council we know it was silas and Barsabbas. they did they knew the names because the bible says these men did not come from us so they knew the names they knew the people but so that we'll never have to remember that oh these people walked in error at one time because they got revelation and knew they were wrong instead of us now holding it that oh this is how that person was before no don't see people from where they were before they've made mistakes in the past great but had they changed yes hold on to the what they have changed into and believe the best about them that's what the bible says remember the bible says in first corinthians 13 4 to 8 a it says that you uh, love believes the best always hopes always persevere so we believe the best about people so that's how we walk in love so that was luke walking in love with those sects of people those pharisees that have come to bring a a problem to the them to the christians now in his own walking in love meant that i will not put their names down that it will be on record that these people were bad people at a time I will be able to allow them to be able to assimilate into the body of Christ and nobody will ever know. Nobody will be the wiser for it. That's his own way of walking in love. So they were walking in different layers of walking in love in the early church. And that's one of the things we need to do even in this present age, walking in love to such a dimension that we have not known before. I'm going to be opening up in chapter 16, another dimension of how we can walk in love with our brethren. And you're going to see it for yourself, how they did it, how they practiced it, how Paul practiced it, how the early church did what they needed.
needed to do to make sure things were right with themselves and their brethren. Hallelujah. But then we now get to the point where Paul and Barnabas have an argument, an argument, and the flesh. You know, these were guys that were working in love. Now, how is it? You see, the Bible is very clear. Sometimes you can be working in love, then something happens and the flesh rises up. Case in point, I was driving today and somebody decided to just do some bad things to me. I, 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 I was sorely tempted to give them a piece of my mind, but I realized it was too expensive to give to somebody else. Hold on to it, go to Jesus. That's what I had to do. In the same way, Paul and Barnabas had the opportunity to iron out the differences and still walk in love. But even though they didn't iron it out, and yet they went apart, they parted ways out of um, division, and they moved God still used it that they still went and did evangelical work in different places. I am of the persuasion that if they had been listening to the Holy Ghost even much more, in that their arguments that they had had, the Holy Ghost would have mentioned to them, Paul, the reason why you are arguing, both of you, and you are saying Mark or no Mark, is that there is somebody else that is supposed to join your team. Then the two of you are supposed to separate. Oh, Barnabas will go with John Mark. You will go with Silas. If they had listened, they would have heard. They would have been instructed. We will not have the accounts that they fought and parted with. But it's also good for us to see that even men, powerful men in the spirit and in the world, sometimes can miss it. But yet, at the end of the day, like I showed you from the Bible, because I had to bring back that Paul did not always forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God that Paul did not forever um, disassociate himself from John Mark, but rather uh, he was able, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I would like to ask, can everybody hear me or can some people hear me? Is it a network thing because I'm on here live, hallelujah, glory to God. Please, could you just respond so that I know, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay. So we see Paul and Barnabas, um, and Paul going with John, um, I am Silas, and we see John Mark and Barnabas going the other way, going to Cyprus and then to some other places. But Paul now had to do a second missionary journey, going to check all the churches that they had been in before. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, beautiful. Okay, okay, thank you. So let me go on. So we can see all those things happening. Now, when you see these things, you know quite well that the Bible was written as an example to us. That even when we make mistakes, we can change and be better. Paul was able to call John Mark and say, John Mark is useful to me in the ministry. Please, John Mark, when it comes to this place, make sure you attend to him, take care of him. Paul was able to relate with John Mark and even Barnabas at the end of the day. Hallelujah. So we make mistakes, but we can also iron it out. You don't have to stay with it and let your ego cause pride. Uh, or better still, well, let your pride bring you into uh, self-deceit. No, you can eat the pride up and say, no, I would prefer to eat my humble pie. I'll be humble enough to know I missed it. And I can call the person. We can have conversations. We can iron it out and be in the, in the best friendly terms possible. Hallelujah. Let me just quickly say this. For so Paul to have attested and said that Barnabas, uh, that um, John Mark could go to some churches meant that he had a high regard. Nobody puts anybody on their pulpits without you having a high regard for the person. So he had a high regard. He, he, he knew that God was in him. Hallelujah. But that's enough summary already. Let's move to um, Acts chapter 16. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Acts chapter 16. He says, Paul traveled to Derby. Uh, you know, remember we said he now moved away. So Paul traveled to Derby and there he arrived in Lystra. Hallelujah. I think I want to use Andelebo Sheketele Bregedebo Sufradish Talakriatus. Oh, Candele Akabasu. Pray with me, pray with me. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Let me use the Kabarus Telekiando Sufrenendele Bregedebo Sukratis Kaba. 
Nandolo, 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 Cruda Sava Dishta la Criatus, E Kerebo Subre Dishte, Candele Yakaba. Okay, okay, okay. Hallelujah. So Paul traveled to Derby and there he arrived, um, um, he al- he traveled to Derby and then to Lystra, where a fellow, a follower, that's a disciple named Timothy lived. Timothy's mother was Jewish. In fact, her name was Eunice. If you check the Bible, her name was Eunice. She was the mother of Timothy. And her grandmother was Lois, who was a spirit-filled, Bible-believing, blessed Jew. So she, from that lineage, he had a godly heritage. But remember, Eunice married a Greek because you will see there and a believer. So we know that Eunice or the mother of Timothy was a believer. But when the Bible says, but his father was a Greek, there is a reason. It's not just that they just said, oh, but his father came from uh, Abelkuta. No, he, he meant that there's something about the father we should be aware of. And when I did a bit of a study, the father was, when they said, but his father was Greek, which meant the father followed the Greek customs and the Greek theology, their way of thinking and all that. So the father was Greek. He was of a different persuasion than um, Eunice. He allowed Eunice to go to church, allowed Eunice to do some things, but the father was Greek. But from that union, even with all that, he was able to bring out, or God was able to bring out a Timothy that followed within the godly lineage that he had come from, which was also Lois, Eunice, then Timothy. So we see that even though the father was Greek and followed Greek customs, they were not of that full persuasion. Timothy was not of the full persuasion because you see in verse 2, the Bible says, and the believers, brothers and sisters in Lystria and Iconium, respected Timothy. Sorry, I'm reading from the expanded Bible. So that's the translation I'm reading from. So just in case you're wondering, it's not lining up with what you are reading, but let's go on. Okay, so it says the believers in Lystria and Iconium respected Timothy and said good things about and testified about Timothy. So they loved Timothy, they liked Timothy. If you look at Acts chapter 13, verse 51, you will see them talking a bit about that, but let's go on. So we see in verse 3, Paul wanted Timothy to travel with him. Why won't he want? When you see a good, hard worker, somebody highly respected, my simple question is this. Are we living our lives in such a way that even the brethren know that this is a Christian? I'm not talking about an unbeliever. They have lower standards. Well, so a lot of them have higher standards. But I'm saying even amongst believers, believers know that you are a believer. We need to live our lives that way because that was what Timothy lived. So that's why he became the bishop of, um, of Philippi. Not because it just happened. It, it happened because Timothy gave himself fully to God. And with that, God allowed him to get to places he would never have dreamed of if he had stayed with the lineage of his father being a Greek. What that means also is that the Greek people prided themselves in um, how they looked, their physique, their athleticism. They were fashionable people. They were people that were fully... They, 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 they prided themselves on the look that they had. And based on that look, they felt... Uh, he, 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 we look more like gods because gods were the ones that gave back to us and all that. So they hold their lineage and they start um, saying, okay, I'm from this place, I'm from this place, I'm from this So they had that. But we know there is nothing in the flesh that can give glory. We know that. And uh, we can't glory in the flesh. We know that. So, but the Greeks did not know that. Then they prided themselves in wisdom, that they were so wise. Because the Greeks would go study, 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 and get information. They prided themselves in knowing the latest things, what happened, oh, the latest gadgets, the latest, they, they prided themselves in that. So, th- that was the Greeks. But here, Timothy had learned, and he had a good report among the brethren, that even though he had a father that dealt that way, Timothy believed in God and his life character was showing and people could attest for him. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that the kind of 
character and the manner of life that you live going forward will be such that men can attest for you, can stand for you, and can respect you because they see God in you in Jesus' name. Verse 3, Paul wanted Timothy to travel with him, but all the people living in that area knew that Timothy's father was Greek. Ah, But, you know, we have respect for this guy. But, mm, Paul, you can't use him. I'm sorry. This guy, we know his father. His father is a Greek. His father, uh, uh, we know he practices some things that are not okay. This boy is coming from there. We, we cannot, we, you can't use him. You can't use him. Now, sometimes people will bring different roadblocks and say, ah, you can't be this. You can't, uh, no, you can't arrive here. You can't go here. You can't do this. You can't do this. But notice something. You know, I, I, I said something. Notice for a fact that all Timothy needed was that he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He could be used by God. Bible says, as many that believe, he gave them power to be called sons of God. Scripture says, this sign shall follow them that believe. That's all. He didn't say, this sign shall follow the uh, people that are not having Greek fathers and mothers. No. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe. It's only your belief that God needs to do things in your life and through you. But here we see another level of love walk. So you see here, so Paul circumcised Timothy. Timothy at this time was a full-blown, full-grown adult. And an adult at that time, because he was of a Greek father, he had never circumcised. So here Timothy had to circumcise so as to do the work. But no, we are not under the law, we are under grace. Very true. No, I can live my life. Jesus has set me free. We agree with that. But there are some levels of love work that you have to walk in to be able to get things done that level of love work is important see paul and timothy decided not because they were under compulsion to do so their liberty had been already arranged and already accomplished in christ but yet so that the conscience of the people that they will minister to and that when they are preaching it won't be that that they are looking at. Ah, I once watched a video and it was an unbeliever that posted it. And I, I was I was pained because he he just v, um, um, filmed a preacher, a female preacher. And she was preaching. If you didn't see the video and you heard the words that were said, she was preaching fire. But uh, what the guy saw and what he could remember was that this lady had made her cleavage completely open. There was really anything that was hidden. It was that low. And yet she was preaching fire. The guy couldn't hear anything. He just filmed it and said, is this what the gospel is coming to? Oh, I'm not interested anymore. Now, for the love of that brother, even though she has liberty, she needs to wear what is appropriate to be able to allow people to hear the message and not see you. They are to see Jesus, not you. They are to see Jesus, not your fashion. They are to see Jesus, not the clothes you wear. The clothes you wear is irrelevant to the Jesus they ought to see. If your fashion will help them to see Jesus, then do it. If your fashion will distract them from seeing Jesus, leave the fashion, leave the freedom, and do Jesus. Hallelujah. So here we see um, Paul circumcising Timothy to please his mother's people. That's why it says to please the Jews. Paul and those with him traveled from town to town and gave and delivered the decisions and the decrees that the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem had said the people should follow. Those four things which I said, which is that don't drink and um, don't take blood, don't as in don't drink the blood, don't eat um, food that um, is sacrificed to adults, idols, don't um, and take things that are strangled, animals that are strangled, don't eat their meat, and then finally um, stop fornicating. Those are the four things that they mentioned. So they were telling the, um, the um, Gentiles and the believers, and as they heard, Bible says that the church grew stronger and grew larger every day. That's verse 5. 
How was that? Because the, the message they prayed was not those four things. The message they prayed is that Jesus only saves you. So you don't have to follow all the mosaic laws. No, 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 no. But let's, out of this liberty, walk in love with our brethren that are also within our church. And based on that, they began to speak and more unbelievers, more Gentiles, knowing that all they needed to do was to believe in their hearts and confess with their mouth, which is what we have been doing. Here in this part of the world, that's what we've been doing. We've not followed all the Mosaic laws. We just simply believed in our hearts, confessed with our mouths, and we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior. So that was what they were propagating. So more people were being added because there was now no conditions and requirements to fulfill that they could never have fulfilled. That was a roadblock. There was none anymore. So people could stream in and the church could be stronger because it was Jesus only. The message is always Jesus only. The message is always going to be Jesus only. So verse 6, let's go on. Now, having gone round the different cities, because they went to different cities that were mentioned, I'm sure in um, KJV there are plenty of cities that were mentioned. Having gone to those cities, they now moved. Paul and those with him went through the areas of Prigia, that's in the northern Central Asia Minor, and then to Galatia, which is one of the provinces in the Roman Empire. And, um, and since the Holy Ghost did not allow them prohibited them, um, whether by circumstance or divine revelation, to preach the gospel in Asia, which is present-day Turkey. When they came near or opposite the country of Mysia, which is the northern section of Asia Minor, which is also present-day Turkey now, they tried to go into Bithynia, northern Asian side, but could not, because the Spirit of Jesus did not let them. So they passed by Mysia and went to Troas. Troas is at the tail end. It's at it's a it's a port, um, port. Um, what do you call it now? Uh, like a port uh -huh, Let me put it that way. They by the sea, by the river, where you take it, um, boats. So they had gotten to Troas. So their aim before was to go by land into Bithynia, but they could not. The Holy Ghost said no. So while they slept in Troas. The Holy Ghost spoke to them through a vision because they said, verse 9, that the, uh, Paul saw a man in a vision uh, from Macedonia, an area across the sea in the mainland Greece. So mainland Greece was in front of them. It was the sea that was dividing them. So somebody else was there in a vision calling them, begging them, urging them, come over to Macedonia and help us. It was that vision, it was that dream which he saw that took them over to this from the sea. Remember I said most of their journeys were dangerous journeys, but yet because he saw something, he moved. Please, Pariba si Fernando Lo Brogodosoto, what do you see? If you don't see anything, you will not go for anything. You've got to see something. They saw a man saying, come help us. That was what moved them. You must be able to see a dying people around you for you to be able to go for, an, um, for evangelism and be determined to preach to people. Because when you see them that they are in a state whereby nothing is, the pro uh, is a problem, you won't really go for evangelism with a heart that is burning to go. But when you realize that these people need Jesus, without Jesus, if Jesus comes today, they are going to hell. And they will remember you walked on the streets beside them. They will remember you were there. They will remember nothing will be hidden from anybody's um, um, knowledge when we arrive at that day. Everything will be laid bare. So everything you are hiding in the cupboard will be laid bare. Everything you have thought of will be laid bare. So we know that. So why not think thoughts that are good and of uh, noble report so that when it is being beamed, see, I, I sometimes I shudder at the fact that, yeah, ah, God, 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 how shall we do that day? But you know what? He says you will not be ashamed. Why? We will know that, thank God, Jesus, as, as the film, you know, you know when, uh, it's my persuasion that when the film, will, um, you know, when you watch some films and they have um, censored it, you just see 
the screen going blurred and you can't see really what is going on behind but you know that what is going on behind is not something you should be watching but you just see it and it goes blurred then it clears up because the sin has been covered when you see such i believe that's what's likely to happen everybody will know that mm, the thing you did here mm, but it will be jesus's blood that is covering it so thank god for the blood of jesus i'm i'm, I'm of that persuasion uh, because i'm wondering ha. Ah, there were some things I thought then that is not good, though. It's not good. Uh -huh. So, and I'm sure it's the same persuasion you have because that's the only way you can face that day with confidence, knowing that Jesus, who saved you. See, that's why you should know that it is only Jesus. It's never about the other things you have done. It's simply Jesus. Because without that blood, we will have no reason to enter into heaven. But let me get back to what we are saying. So, they saw that a man said in a vision, Please come and help us. So please see something. See something. And even in your career, see something. It's what you see about your career that will move you to take the necessary sacrifices, to go the extra mile to achieve greatness. Without seeing something, you can't achieve greatness. It is the goals you set in front of yourself. It's the goals you download. It's the instructions you see. It's the revelation of the destiny God has called you to that makes you run through, carry your cross, uh, and face uh, the work of the ministry it is that that moves you but without you seeing something you just mark time no we are not marking time anymore we see a brighter future we see a greater future we see ourselves as god sees us uh, that this is the acts of the post acts of the holy spirit in us and in the apostles we see that the same god uh, that saved them saved us we see that the same blood that saved us saved them we see that the same spirit that was on them is on us and we see that the same results they have we can have hallelujah so we see and we keep moving on it was that that made them to make the necessary sacrifice to travel across the sea you can go and check on the map you will see that they had to pass um, some dangerous waters but let's move on after paul had seen the vision we switched okay after paul had seen the vision immediately we prepared to leave for macedonia we made plans to leave for macedonia understanding and being convinced that god had called us to tell the good news preach the gospel to those people so they moved they set sail we left embarked on a journey on the sea from Troas and sailed straight to the island of samothrace it's an island in between um, um greece and um, and where they were at okay a mountainous island in the north asian sea so that's where they were the next day we sailed from that samothrace to new neapolis that is a city in macedonia one of the first cities paul visited in the continent of europe so this was paul now entering into europe and yes then we went by land to philippi please remember philippi and they are the philippians it was a Roman colony, one of the biggest, greatest colonies at that time. It was a Roman colony, not in Italy, in Rome, but rather in Greece. It was a colony that the Romans owned. And let me just say some few things about that place. It was a town that belonged to Romans, that it was Roman law that was subsisting there. And it was Roman customs that was prevalent there. The privileges of being a Roman was also there. So these were people that yet they were in Greece, but yet they were Roman. So anyone born there, just like as they were born, um, um, as Paul was born in, um, I believe it's um, Cilicia, uh, he, also a Roman colony. These people were also Romans in thinking, in operation, in all that they did. Okay, we will find out why I had to say that as we move on. And it was a leading city in that part of the um country called macedonia we stayed there for several days so they were in philippi for several days on the sabbath which is part of the several days on the sabbath the day that they gather you know let's see, see i told you that these guys had a, a shabakato sofredishta and bosha. these guys had a habit of immersion submergence they had a habit of immersion of submergence 
of overwhelming in the word, in prayer, and in a spirit of expectancy. Why do I say so? They were in a Roman colony, which means rarely will you find much Jewish representation. It will be the high and mighty of the Jews that could go into a Roman colony and live. In fact, they would do business there, not really live, do business there. So they knew that this was a colony. Yeah, and you know, it's like somebody traveling for vacation and going to Paris. And because and you if it was that Sunday to you, you cannot but go to a church. You will find one, even though it's in a strange land. But if you were being forced to go to church before all. It was just, let me shall do. When you go abroad. When you go abroad, you will not go to service. You might not even connect to internet to watch a service. You might just say, well, I'm just resting. I'm just resting. No, sir. Sir, ma. The early apostles, the early Christians, our brothers in Christ, the ones your house will be beside in heaven, did what I just said. I'm showing you here on the Sabbath day. They did not have Sabbath, really, because it was not Israel. It was not Caesarea. It was not anywhere. They had gone out. They were in, in Europe at this point in time, and they were still yet wanting to serve and do the things of God. I remember once when we went, um, uh, when we were at uh, Florida, and it was a Sunday. My wife and I looked at each other and we just said, ah, it's a Sunday. What do we do? Well, um, we were there for some training. The people did not organize Sunday service. And it was like, ah, in my mind, I was like, ah, these people, I, you are, I know you people are Christians. Why are you not doing a Sunday service for us? They weren't because they were going to their various churches. So we sat down, we picked the phone and Googled what are the Bible-believing, faith-filled churches around and we googled and found one the only uh, interesting thing it was a it was a journey from Troas to Macedonia I can tell you because it took us I think 45 to 50 minutes of a taxi we we you know is Uber of an Uber carrying us on good speed not not going 20, 30, good speed, and it took us 45 feet. It was like us traveling from Lagos to Ibadan to have service and then come back from Ibadan to Lagos. That's what we did that day. Maybe if we had browsed better, because later I found out if we had browsed better and I said Methodist churches that are Pentecostal, there were two or three around the area. I found that out later. But we went that journey. Why did we go? Because it was a habit. We couldn't, we couldn't sit still knowing that we had to be in church. Even though we were in a foreign land. And we, had, we could easily sleep in and wake up because we had sessions after. No, we went to church. And I'm grateful to God that we went to church that day because we went to a Bible-believing church. We saw a different level of Christians. We saw prosperity. We understood. We saw signs and wonders. We saw, well, that was my first time of meeting the guy with no arms. I, I've forgotten his name. That um, usually talks and preaches. I saw him. We were in service. He was in front. We were looking. We were blessed by his message. And we realized that, thank God, we went. It's the same way here. On the Sabbath day, just like that, they went outside the city gates to the river where they thought and expected maybe there would be a special place for prayer. Why did they think so? Because they knew in town there can't be a synagogue. It's a Roman colony. Philippa evidently had no synagogue. I'm reading from um, a study there. Philippa evidently had no synagogue because it had a small Jewish population so they did not build a synagogue so there was nowhere that was a place of worship but they knew that anyone that was a jew 
will, knowing that there is these times of prayer and this time a Sabbath must be uh, given to God. We are not selling. We are not doing any business. They knew that somehow they will meet. So most likely they will meet by the side of the river. You know, Jesus had many of his messages and preached around the side of the river. There is a reason. But we will leave it for that later. Some women had gathered there. So we sat down and talked with them. One of the listeners was a woman named Lydia from the city of Titria. It's in Western Asia Manor, whose job was selling, who was a dealer, a merchant in purple cloth. So you, I know you have usually seen purple, in, in, um, a dealer in purple. Purple actually was the clothing for the royals. It was an expensive material to get the purple dye you spent a lot so in other renditions they will say a dark red cloth but it's actually purple only the cream de la cream wore purple and so she was a dealer so maybe um how can i say it okay i have an idea she was a dealer in satin jacquard voile lace you understand now that kind of material that, ah, is only the I and mighty that buy it. That was what she was dealing in. So this was, for lack of a better way, Yaiko, a woman who was a, a, a major force, but she was listening to the message of the gospel. She was a Jew. She was a worshiper of God, a God-fearing Gentile. And the Lord opened her mind, and she was able to understand what Paul was saying. She gave ear to Paul, and she and the people in her household were saved because of that. I've already jumped to 15. They were saved because of that. And it was that the woman listened to Paul and Silas. When we preach in church, Listen to the message. See, it's not only blessing you. It will bless others that come in contact with you. So you do yourself a disservice if you are not listening and applying. Because when they come in contact with you, you have deprived them of what you should have given to them. You can't give what you don't have. You have deprived them of what you should have given to them. So listen. It's the word of God. Take it. It's not somebody's thinking. It is God's counsel to you. Take it. Abide by it. Follow it. Be obedient to it. Your life will move forward and you can help others from the comfort you have received from the word to move forward. So let me move on. So she does in verse 15, she invited them and urged them and she said this, if you think I'm truly, and if you have judged me to be a believer indeed of the Lord, please come and stay in my house. So she offered and persuaded and strongly urged them to stay with her. What that statement meant is very heavy. They were in a Roman colony. These were Jews. They were preaching about Jesus. The woman knew the risk. She is saying, and because I know Paul and Silas do not want to put her in trouble, they would have said, no, don't worry, madam, we'll find an inn or something and all that. We don't want to put you under any problem and all that. You are a, you are a woman of substance here, and I know that it's, this could affect your business. They could shut you down. They could do this to you, madam. Don't worry, don't worry. But she urged them. She said, if you truly believe, I'm a believer. I will pause and say this to you. Please understand that the believers of that time understood to be a believer was to sign their death warrant, that they had given their life to Christ. That statement, give our lives to Christ, it, we make it so trivial. And you know, we've now, which is true, I'm not arguing against it's true. We received Christ as our Lord and Savior. But the believers also knew that having received, they handed over themselves to Christ. So that give our lives to Christ, they understood it as well. 
both sides of the sword they understood. Because it's the word of God. Both sides they understood. It's a double-edged sword. They understood what they were doing. So this woman was saying, ah, I am a woman of repute. I am a woman that is wealthy. I know this decision can completely wreck me because they can take over all my property just for this. But sir, Amma, if you truly believe, I am a believer now, just like you, who has put their lives on the line, please come and stay with me. So you now understand what she was saying. Who loved not their life unto death. You understand it now? Let's move on. So once while we were going to the place for prayer, so that same place that they met, a servant girl met us. She had a familiar spirit. Uh, they, in this translation, they actually told us the kind of spirit that she had is irrelevant to us. She just had a familiar spirit and she was bringing money to her owners by foretelling, saying things that would happen. So somebody is asking me a question. How do these uh, spirits know? Ah, uh, pause. The pastor tell you he's a demonologist? No, but I'll give you some insights. When, see, a, the devil does not know all because if he knew, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If he knew, he would not have killed Peter, Paul, and all those people because it's the, because he killed them, the message spread even further. He would not have touched. So he doesn't know all. But he has been so much around the world that he has seen patterns and so can use an algorithm and use that pattern and just say, oh, this is where this is going. If this person does this, this is what you are doing. So the foretelling is not as if they are, oh, counsel of God. No. It's just looking at different pointers and being able to predict. That was what they were doing. But these women had looked, mm, uh, this girl had looked, and she now started saying from verse 17, these men are servants. The servant there, the Greek word is actually bond servants. People that have handed themselves over to their master. Though free, but yet have handed themselves over to their master. So bond servants of the Most High. They are telling you how you can be saved. But pause. I'm a minister of the gospel. I want to break into a town. Then as I'm talking to people privately, somebody heralds and says, Ah, that man over there is a son of the living God. That man, he performs miracles. He does this. He does that. He does this. Follow him. Follow him. How would you know that that person is of the devil, except by a spirit of discernment. So it was a spirit of discernment that Paul used to realize that something is wrong. Not everything you hear and you see is real or is of God. Please pray to God to always have a spirit of discernment to discern and know whether God is the one powering that thing or is the devil that is powering it. Paul had been silent for a while. I'm sure he must have been spe maybe possibly speaking in tongues and wanting to find out what really, what really is going on, what really is going on, what really is going on. And the Holy Ghost had revealed to him. And that's what I'm asking you to do too. You know, we are in a spirit of prayer, in a spirit of the word and in a spirit of expectancy. The word so that you can find out, does it line up with the word? Prayer so that you can get the download you need. And expectancy so that you can hear from God or expect to receive a direction that can help you. So the, here was Paul. So she kept on doing this for a while, for many days. This bothered, annoyed, and expatriated Paul. So he turned and said to the spirit, By the power of the Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. He spoke, and that same hour the spirit left her. Verse 19 says, When the owners of the servant girl saw that their source for making money, the hope of their profits was gone, they had to grab Paul and Silas. But how did they know? How did they know? Because they knew that this girl had been talking about these things ahead, ahead. So they, they knew the pattern. But now she was not talking again. She had become silent. The spirit that was giving her enablement to speak about those things was gone. Now, in its place, I believe Paul would not have left her the same way. He would have had to now say, okay, receive 
the Holy Ghost or receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because if you don't do that and you leave the place bare, another spirit will come in. So what he must have done at that point in time for them not to be able to have any profit again was that the spirit that was now in her was not doing forth telling anymore. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the city rulers, leaders and authorities in the marketplace. The city rulers at that point in time, I will explain. They brought Paul and Silas to the Roman rulers, to the magistrates. Pause and think. Now you may think of magistrate as the judge and all that. No, the magistrate here is um, commissioner of police, deputy commissioner of police and his lieutenant. So for, for us to understand this scripture very well, see it from this angle. So watch. So they say they brought Paul and Silas to the commissioner of police and deputy commissioner of police and his lieutenants and said, these men, Jews, are making trouble in disturbing our city. So it's the same way of me going and saying, ah, commissioner of police for Lagos, sir, there are some people from Niger that have come to scatter this place. I don't understand. They have been scattering. They've been doing all kinds of things. They are just bringing cows. They are doing all these things. What do you think the man would do? He is in charge of that place. He hears that. So he says, ah, what's going on? Then verse 21 is where you know that it was a Roman colony. They are teaching things, advocating customs that are not right or permitted or lawful for us as Romans to adopt, accept, or do. So it was the customs that they used to rope Paul and Silas, that this is a Roman colony. If anybody's, Romans are above all. Romans are bigger than all. So you can't be telling us to follow your barbaric uh, um, way of thinking. So that, it was an infantry. It's the same as you saying that the, okay, sorry, let me not use Niger. Mm, let me say, a group of people outside of Nigeria come into Nigeria and start defecating all around, start causing a problem. Obviously, you say, ah, ah this is not right. Lagos is a clean state. They, you know, you make that uh, case. Obviously, the commissioner of police will fight. So the next thing that happens is verse 22. The crowd joined, you know, other people will be hearing, eh, in our town, in our place, like they say about Portacot, that is very clear. That when you see people, they will, ah, Portacot is clear. This is so. That's what they were doing. Say, eh? So the commissioner of police said, tear their clothes. Why did they tear the clothes? So that what they were about to do will make sense. We, we, we really matter. And so they tore the clothes of Paul and Silas. I'm in verse 22. And ordered that they be beaten with rods. The rods there are big metal sticks that they use in whipping and you will see that paul said that he had been done he had been whipped that way three times you see that in second corinthians 11 25 three times i had been beaten with rods not with koboko not with the cat of nine lives no three times i had been beaten with rods rods i had received 49 stripes less um, um 50 stripes less one that's 49 stripes that's that there, there was a whip that they used to have then. It had 49 mouths. 49. Uh, Koboko 49. And on the tips of it were broken bottles, barbed wire, different kinds of things that when they slashed you, when they pulled it back, it was supposed to pull the skin off your body. That was how they scourged Jesus. And that's how they were scourging Christians. Sama. We have a... Wait, see. So we have a heavy responsibility. We are not living in those times. But yet, we have been called to preach. They had challenges, roadblocks, floggings, imprisonments, killing, traveling, doing all kinds of things just to preach the gospel. We should, do, we, should, we should not fall their hand. Let me put it that way. We should carry the gospel, especially with this level of ease, and preach it very well. After being severely beaten, Many blows and laid on, um, was laid on them. Paul and Silas, I'm 23, were thrown into jail, into prison. And the jailer was ordered to guard them carefully. The word carefully there was securely. These guys must not escape. Do, do everything to secure them. So this guy did not take them to Alagbon. No, he carried them to Kirikiri and put them in the maximum prison. That's where they were. So when he had this order, he put them far inside the jail and pinned them down, secured, fastened their feet down with stalks, that is wooden large blocks of wood, chained to the ground. 
So their legs are there chained to the ground. About midnight, you see, we're about to step into one of the biggest, you know, Hollywood has not been able to show this particular, that this particular part. They, they, they won't be able to capture it because this is awesome. Awesome beyond what a Hollywood can produce. Because you see here, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. You, you can show prayer and singing. You can show singing hymns to God as the other prisoners had underline that so that means it was in silent praise and worship it was in silent praise and prayer it wasn't silent they were praying and talking and everybody in the prison i mean literally everybody in the prison was hearing them they were bold christians so everybody was hearing and the more they sang the more they lifted the hearts of people the more things must have um, the atmosphere was changing and because the atmosphere round about had changed there was an eruption. You see, there is a cause and an effect. If you will erupt here, there will be an eruption also in the spirit world. Why? Because you are provoking the power of God to bear. That's why sometimes when we are worshiping God in church, so all of a sudden you just say, oh, it's a good time to pray, to do this. Because see, the waters have been stirred. There is a stirring. The, 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 the foundations have been pushed and, and, and shaken. And many a times that is when change are already loosed, doors have been opened. So it's just for us to go receive and take. Hallelujah, glory to God. So in verse 26, suddenly there was a great violent earthquake uh, yeah, uh, that shook the foundation of the prison. Then all the doors of the prison were open and all the prisoners were freed from their stocks, their chains. They were free. The prison door opened, everything opened. Pause. When there was just a small break in the wall of um, Abuja prison some years back, some people began to break, 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 and there was a prison break. People ran out. They could run out because any prisoner wants his freedom. But here we see that the prisoners were under an aura. There was an awe of God. There was a presence that was in the prison. It was not just that something just happened in the natural. Something glorious was going on. They knew this was beyond what they had experienced before. In fact, I'm almost sure, I've not done that research, but I'm almost sure it was unusual to have an earthquake around there because they felt, hey, this has to be something beyond the normal and there they were they were frozen there and god's presence was there hallelujah the bible says that the jailer woke up and saw that the prison doors were open naturally they've run out if they've run out my life is gone see i need to okay but let me let, let's go thinking that the prisoners had already escaped he got his sword and was about to kill himself being responsible, he would suffer punishment and shame for their escape. This was a true Roman soldier. You know why I say he's a true Roman soldier? Because the Roman soldiers were trained and taught that you should never suffer shame. Whatever will bring shame to you, if we've given you an assignment and you can't do it, you die on that assignment or you kill yourself on that assignment because you cannot come back and say it was not doable. Now, why did I say so? Because there were some fake Roman soldiers who were holding Peter and Paul, uh, Peter and John in prison. Remember in the Acts chapter 4, chapter 3, who were holding that they went back and were saying with their own mouths that uh, somebody had uh, somebody. That's why you saw in the second one, that was the first one, the second one that happened, you saw that the king slaughtered them. That's King Agrippa the first slaughtered all of them. Why? Because it was normal for the Roman soldiers just to kill themselves instead of facing shame so he knew this cannot continue the first time we allowed this one we will do so but this one was ready to kill himself paul had to shout from inside the prison already i'm in verse 28 that don't hurt yourself we are all here ah don't hurt yourself we are all here yeah kete, kete, kete. sometimes we want to go into some things and just say you know but the bible makes us to know do not hurt yourself everything you are looking for is already there but because when you seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness all of that things shall be ordained unto you we are all here hallelujah glory to god that which you are thinking ah there is a loss it, there is no loss because we are all 
here. Ayateke brosotu kobakata. We are all here. Ye We are all here. The healing, the victory, the promotion, the success, the advancement, that which you desire is all here. It's not far from you. It's here. The aparuso fregete kiata. So they said, uh, we are all here. Verse 29, because the jailer understood what was said to him, the jailer told someone, bring lights. Let me see. Because uh, everywhere was dark already. Let me see. Then he ran, rushed inside, shaking with fear because he knew this is God and God alone. And I pray for you that you will have God encounters that everyone, Gentile, will even know that there is a God in your midst, that there is a God in your life. It will be obvious to all in the mighty name of Jesus. The testimony you will walk in. People will know that it's only the hand of God that can make it happen. Hallelujah. So he fell down before Paul. And Silas, he brought them outside and said, Men, lords and sirs, the sir with a capital F, what must I do to be saved? Why did he, why was he provoked? He knew they were walking in realms that natural man cannot walk in. I pray for you that you will walk in realms that natural man cannot walk in. That men will have to say, Sirs, what must I do? To be saved because they will know that it is that you are they will know that it they can they be yourself. So they will know that you are of a different species, that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, not the old creation, but the new one. They will know in the name of Jesus. You see, in verse 31, they said to him, That's Paul and Silas giving him the message of the supernatural. Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. It's only Jesus. Ayateke Brosoto. Only Jesus, the, the message that they preached to the man was not that, no, you need to clean your life, you need to do this. No, no, it's only Jesus. You know why? If you stay under the water of the word, uh, that water will clean everything about you. Remember the video I showed you in church. No matter how dirty the bottle of water is or the cup of water the, or the cup of contain, the contamination is, uh, as long as it stays under the water, the living word of God. As long as it stays with God, uh, that that water will keep filling and filling till it empties out the impurities and stays as pure water because you just have to stay there. So he knew that. So they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and all your people. Please, can you lend me another 10 minutes for me to round up this? I would really appreciate it. Let me move on. Believe in the Lord Jesus. Are there people that say, I can go 10 more minutes, please just show it in the chat room just tell me you can go 10 you can go 10 i have just uh, 10 more verses to go with it so they said to him believe in a please post so that i can know or else i'll have to round up believe in the lord jesus and you will be saved you and all the people in your household so the message is never only to you it's always about all the people around you god is not only thinking about you he's thinking about everybody connected to you the salvation you have is supposed to be everybody connected to you. the victories you have is supposed to be everybody connected to you so you do not just have this gospel for yourself and sit down hear god's word and all this and you do not preach it. No, you must preach it. And aside from that, you must live a life that shows to the others that there is something different about me. Because the Bible says there will be a distinction between them that serve God and them that do not, between the righteous and the unrighteous. So this guy was given a promise that we can lay hold on. And I want to say this, if you are in a family that all of them are not yet born again, or some of them are not born again, or a few are not born again, or it's just one person that is not born again, this is a blood bought uh, promise that you can have that says uh, believe in the Lord your God and you will be saved. You and your household. So everyone that is connected to you has a blood bought right as soon as you get into Christ for them to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. All you need to do is keep praying for them and keep chipping in the gospel. Let the Holy Ghost use you. Let the Holy Ghost speak through you. It may not show up now but you can be guaranteed as long as the seed is being sown there shall be a harvest. Seed, time and harvest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So verse 32. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for saying I can go on another 10 minutes. Well, it was only two people. Can so other people put it in? So Paul and Silas, they told the message of the word of God to the jailer and to the people in his house. So they preached the gospel to the people in his house as well. And at that same hour, 
but they washed Paul and Silas' wounds. No so So that means they must have inflicted wounds on Paul and Silas. Yet they were singing and praising songs. Ah, that means that they were in pains in their body because it was not koboko. It was it It was steel rods that were being used to flog them. And he would have injured them heavily. But yet they were still oh joyful. You didn't see Paul here depressed. You didn't see Paul here. See, what are we going through that we are getting depressed? Be like David, encourage yourself in the Lord. And pray in tongues, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in tongues. Stir up the joy on the inside. You will find out you can live the same way the early apostles lived. Because here were people that had a Libra. So this was the law of the law. I preach the gospel. I'm following God. I'm serving God. I'm doing the things of God. And yet, some Somebody's putting in prison. But they before they put me in prison, they ridicule me, tear all my clothes. Uh, they flog me with rods. Uh, I'm injured everywhere. I'm sitting in the, the prison. Yet inside, uh, I'm not down. Uh, I'm still up. I'm praising God. Uh, I'm worshiping Him. My body is aching, but I'm worshiping. And uh, my situation is not yet changed, but I'm worshiping. I'm worshiping God to such a point that God sees that even in the midst of this particular mess, uh, there is a message that is coming out. So God. God invades that situation uh, and changes it for the better. So you see them washing the wounds of Paul and Silas. And that same day, that same night, all the people in the house of the jailer were baptized. Some of you may think it's just water baptism alone, but it was more than that. They were not just only water baptized, they were, must have been Holy Ghost baptized. Because Paul will never leave any believer without being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because that was one of the major cardinal points. Why? Because he knew that even if I leave you, I've left the deposit guaranteeing that which is to come. I've left the Holy Ghost on your inside. Who is able to heal, help you, raise you, teach you, guide you, direct you, and get you to that promised land. So they were baptized immediately. After this, the jailer took Paul and Silas home and fed them. Why? Because they had not given them food. Why? They were in a maximum prison. Why? These were prisoners that they said secure heavily. They didn't want to, them to use food to poison themselves or to do something or use a fork or they, mm -mm, we are not giving you anything. You will stay there. Uh, we know what we took, put inside there. So you don't have any implements to cause yourself harm or to break out of the. So they, they didn't give them food. So this man had to give them food. He and his family rejoiced at the fact that they now believed in God. So notice Kayandele Brosotoho Frakateli Kiate. Notice this. Notice Notice this, notice this, notice that Paul and Silas went into that prison, not for themselves, but for the jailer and his family. Yes, for the jailer and his family. Because it was the jailer and his family that God saved because they entered into the prison. God had a plan proposed so that even when Satan concocted a plan, God put a virus there to make sure that his own will and plans will still be done. He puts it in the back end that he could still control the situation. That's what God always does. See, when Satan brings some things against you, know that there is always a way of escape. And know that it will accomplish that which God has said to do. God has a plan. When he killed Jesus, when did Abriato Sufria, when did Likia, when the devil killed Jesus, set up plans to kill Jesus, God had already put a virus into that situation to turn it around that because Jesus died, all of us can now live. Ayandele brosotuku bakatalea, that when they killed all the apostles, because of that, the persecution was so great that the word of God spread far and wide everywhere. He did so here again, we see that these people had now believed in God. And how do, am I so convinced that that's what happened? Look at verse 35. The next morning, the commissioner of police, deputy commissioner of police and his lieutenants sent a message. You can let them go free. Uh, I thought they were, they were the most wanted people as of yesterday. 
In fact, the instruction you gave is such that these people are criminally criminal. We should not let them back into society. No. The assignment has been fulfilled. So God spoke to the hearts of these people again, released them. But look at what Paul does. When in verse 36, the jailer told Paul, this is what they have said. They say, you can go. You can now leave. Go in peace. Nobody will trouble you anymore. Verse 37. But Paul said to the policeman, no, 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 no. You know, he didn't have the commission of police. The commission of police usually will send constables to policemen. So he told the policeman, they beat us in public without a trial. Uncondemned. So there was no law that they used to put us in prison. Even though we are Roman citizens, remember it's a Roman colony. We are Roman citizens. By Roman law, so I need to say this to you, by Roman law, it is stated that a citizen, a citizen should not be beaten without a trial. So they didn't just only beat them, they now threw them in prison. Double jeopardy. Because by Roman law, if you do that, you have gone against the emperor, Caesar, and you should be killed too. If this person you have wronged is willing to appeal to Caesar. <laughs> and they threw us in jail. Now they want to, to make us go away, get rid of us, throw us out quietly in secret. No! Let them come themselves and bring us out. Commissioner of police, come to my... Come, come, come. The police told and reported to the commissioner of police what Paul said, you remember his magistrates, Roman officers, that's what your Bible says, magistrates, so we are using so that you can understand, the commissioner of police. When the officers, that's the commissioner of police, deputy commissioner of police and his lieutenants, heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were afraid because they know the law. If these guys pursued this case, we are dead men. So they came and told Paul and Silas, that they were sorry. They apologized. I'm reading from my own translation here. That says they apologized to them and appeased them and took them out of jail by themselves and asked them to, please, I beg you, leave this city. I tell God, beg you, be going. They didn't push them out. This was now the, the hunter was being hunted. I beg, just, just go. Please, 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 please. Please. Mm. And remember, Paul is a lawyer. Ah, my goodness gracious. He knows the law and can quote it and can bring everything out. So they came and told Paul. They appeased and took them out and asked them to leave the city. Verse 40. So when they came out of the jail, so Paul listened to the appeal. They went to Lydia's house. <laughs> Or because you know, Romans know that these guys are causing problems, and yet Lydia accepts them to still come back to her house. Lydia was a true Christian, believer of the highest order in that time. They went to Lydia's house where they saw some of the believers. Lydia had gathered believers. Who says there was no prayer going on in Lydia's house that night? Who says it was just Paul and Silas' prayer only and praises that was going on? We never may know. But I, 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 I seem to believe that the believers that gathered there would not have been silent. They would have been praying. Brothers and sisters, and they encouraged them. So Paul and Silas encouraged them, shared with them built their faith and said, you see, we came out of this thing at the end of the day. That's what we do. We walk in dominion. They told them things, encouraged them, and then they left. Hallelujah. We've come to the end of chapter 16. By tomorrow, we'll be entering into chapter 17, which is a, a very interesting chapter. So please make it a date because we'll find Paul and Silas in Thessalonica, another major city in the city called, or the country called Macedonia at that point in time. And if you read your Bible very well, if you read the uh, Philippians and read Thessalonians, you will see that Paul had a great number of people that were born out of the churches that were there. So we know that the ministry of Paul was effective. And I also know 
in the name of Jesus. In fact, I'm persuaded that as you are going through these scriptures and learning about it, the gift of God on your inside will find expression and will bring you out and you will have much results in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you that you will walk in wisdom, walk in insights, walk in understanding. I pray for you that there shall be testimonies abounding. I pray for you that it will be obvious to all that God is with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.